I'm Harriet Vance Ball, cardiologist and clinical trialist from McMaster University in Canada, and I'm so delighted to have with me uh, Dr. Isabel Mai from APHP in Paris. She is principal investigator of the APICAT trial, and we are here at ACC 2025 to discuss this fascinating study. Welcome, Isabel. Thank you. Um, I wonder if you could give us some context uh, so we understand why you chose to answer the specific question that your trial sought to address. Yes, so I'm a clinician and uh, it is a, a new question in my practice because uh, 20 years ago, patients uh, with the diagnosis of VTE were uh, almost all dead uh, within six months. And thanks to progress of uh, anti-cancer treatment mm -hmm. and also uh, thrombosis management, so patients are still alive uh, and six months. And cancer disease has become a chronic disease. And uh, consequently, at six months, six months following the index event, we have patients, we have still can active cancer, and we don't know what to do with the treatment. Mm -hmm. So it is uh, from this uh, situation that the idea uh, came uh, to initiate a study to try to, uh, to, to find a solution. They have an active cancer. They have already uh, had a, a thromboembolic event. Mm -hmm. They are still alive at six months. Treatment discontinuation is not an option because of the risk of recurrence. Right. Patients with an active cancer that already uh, had a thrombosis. You can imagine discontinuing the treatments. We have to continue. That's what guidelines say. We have to continue. But the dosage is uh, the first regimen antiplasmic is was not clear. Right. So these patients are at risk of both thromboembolic disease and bleeding. Yeah. And the treatment to treat VTE increases the risk of bleeding. So yours was a non-inferiority trial that assessed um, yes. a low dose versus a normal yes. dose regimen of apixaban. Yes, we are trying to identify the, the optimal regimen for the patient. To our priority is to prevent the risk of recurrence because it's life-threatening. This is our priority. <laughs> And if possible, is this objective is achieved with a low dose? In the second step, we would like to, to reduce the risk of bleeding complications. Right. In this, so patients once again are very fragile. So mm -hmm. many complications and the bleeding for them, it's a, it's a bad thing, and it has the possibility to to be effective. Mm -hmm. and to have less risk, it would be very good. So right. It's a growing population, more and more patients with these treatments. So you used a hierarchical testing procedure to assess whether a pixaban at a dose of 2.5 milligrams twice daily was non-inferior to a pixaban 5 milligrams daily on your efficacy endpoint. And what was that primary endpoint? Yes, so it's so, a so primary endpoint. So once again, before going to the bleeding effect, uh, the priority was to be sure mm -hmm. yeah. that yeah. low runs of dose would not be associated with an excessivity mm -hmm. recurrence. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, we succeeded in that because both dosage were very effective. So okay. the risk of complications was uh, very low. And, uh, Tell us about the primary outcome and the hierarchy. Yeah, okay, the, the primary outcome was adjudicated because it is very important to, to say that adjudicated recurrent VTE. It, it was a, a composite uh, endpoint, which we did, of course, a recurrent symptomatic VTE, mm -hmm. but also incidental VTE mm -hmm. and possibly VTE related death. Right, and then your Secondary outcome, or secondary and outcome was uh, clinical level of bleeding. Again, the composite endpoint of major bleeding and clinically relevant non-major bleeding. Right. And what was your non-inferiority margin for that primary endpoint? 
uh, it was a 2.0, so it's well explained in the paper, the manuscript has been just published in the New England Journal of Medicine. And uh, the rationale with that was uh, the, the rate of events observed uh, in the subgroup of the amplified extensive studies of um, cancer patients. And uh, the, it was uh, well accepted. <laughs> okay, so an absolute margin of 2%. And what were the baseline characteristics of patients? What kind of cancers were included? So, uh, of importance, so this population is very real, representative of the patients uh, we are meeting in our practice. So, mean age uh, 67, mm -hmm. um, uh, site of cancer representative of patients uh, undergoing extended treatment, such as uh, the cancer with the bed of best chronoclosis, be uh, breast cancer, colorectal cancer, the state cancer, force, but also. Uh, a good proportion or a high proportion of patients with lung cancer because uh, mm -hmm. thanks to anti new anti-cancer therapy and immunotherapy, those patients can also survive for a, a long time. And of note, two-thirds of them were at the metastatic stage. So that uh, illustrates that the foot patients uh, live longer with the chronic uh, cancer disease at an advanced uh, stage. Right, and, and more than 50% of your patients were women. Yes, right. So reflecting our clinical practice in cardio-oncology, which has become a field of its own. Um, so tell us about the intervention duration period, the follow-up period, and then what your treatment effect estimates were. Uh, patients uh, were followed for a 12 months duration. Mm -hmm. Once again, they live uh, a, a long time, and uh, the our results illustrate that they, they they were following the, the study treatment for eleven point eight months. So there was a good turn of adherence. Mm -hmm. It's a more important point uh, to us. Mm -hmm. And then your primary treatment effect. Uh, so the, the primary effect, so the non inferiority could be demonstrated. Mm -hmm. because uh, the 12 months cumulative incidence was uh, non inferior in so the two dose uh, regimen as compared to the full dose, 2.1% mm -hmm. as compared to 2.8% emitting the non inferiority margin. So mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's a good point. Here there is no risk, uh, no excess of VTE recurrent risk when lowering the dose as compared to continue the uh, the food dose. Right, so quite a remarkable uh, hazard ratio of 0.76. As you said, the non-inferiority margin was met, demonstrating that the 2.5 milligram twice daily dose was non-inferior to the 5 milligram twice daily dose with regards to the primary outcome of symptomatic or incidental venous thromboembolism. And then you have the safety endpoint or your secondary endpoint of bleeding. So tell us about that effect estimate. Yes, so it's important to check this efficacy non inferiority first. And we would not uh, have been allowed to test the superiority on bleeding if this non inferiority had not right. been demonstrated. So we are allowed to move to the uh, bleeding uh, risk. Uh, of course, and we could uh, demonstrate that the lower dose was superior to the full dose uh, in terms of uh, clinically relevant feeding with uh, uh, the, uh, a risk uh, significantly reduced. 25% reduction in the risk of clinically relevant feeding. It's very important for patients. And both major bleeding and clinically relevant non-major bleeding were lower uh, in uh, the reduced dose regimen. Right, so really um, transformative findings. Yes. Um, tell us about your other secondary endpoints. Okay. Uh, secondary endpoints, so we can uh, check the component of each endpoint efficacy. You can have a look at uh, the recurrent symptomatic or recurrent uh, um, incidental uh, events and for uh, bleeding you can have a look of major bleeding or 
and you can run for tomato bleeding. Once again, both criteria were lower in your pictures than rats and birds. And then you also looked at the endpoint of all cause death, which you had about a 20% event rate for. And what were those findings? So for about uh, the deaths, uh, of death uh, criteria, it was no difference between the two comms. Mm -hmm. That is very reassuring. Mm -hmm. But we can also observe that the rate of death is not so high. Uh -huh. We identify, so we're illustrating that patients surviving six months after cancer associated thrombosis have a quite good prognosis uh, of a 12 months follow up. That's the new information. And so, did you have any patients? Um, what was the sort of intervention delivered? in both arms as intended, or did you have any crossovers at any point? No, because we were in a double blind design. Okay. So no crossover. Okay. Um, so fascinating findings, really practice changing, demonstrating that among patients who had cancer and an episode of VTE, that a lower dose of apixaban was non-inferior to the routine dose in reducing recurrent and incidental BTE, and it afforded the benefit of a reduction in bleeding, but no change in all-cause death. Did I summarize that accurately? Yes, yes, yes. It's a uh, low excess of recurrence when lowering the dose, and a pure benefit 25 reduction once again. So just a fake, I really good. So I think it's a new, uh, a new regimen for our practice. Yes. Well, congratulations on a well-executed trial and on your presentation today. Thank you very much. So nice to meet you as well.